From the Mutual Studios in Washington, I'm Fulton Lewis, and that's the top of the news as it looks from here. Welcome to the sound of suspense, to the fear you can hear. For the next 52 minutes, I'll be your companion on a journey to a place in the past. It used to be that only the mystics believed you could go back, relive your life. But didn't so eminent a scientist as Albert Einstein say that the past, the present, and the future are all intermingled somehow? Then, why should we question a gentleman named Spencer Chadwick? who is asking a very vital question. Inspector, do you believe a person can do it again? Do what again? Go back. Where? To that point in his life where it went wrong. It turned sour and corrected. No. No, I don't believe it's possible. Well, I'm doing it, Inspector. I'm doing it. I'm changing it. I've gone back. Inspector... I've gone back. Our mystery drama, You Can Die Again, was especially written by Sam Dan and stars Richard Mulligan. It is sponsored in part by Anheuser-Busch Incorporated, Brewers of Budweiser. I'll be back shortly with Act One. evening, we are concerned with bright young men. That is, those who began as bright young men, like Spencer Chadwick. Bright young Spencer Chadwick married his boss's daughter, but that was 23 years ago. And today, young Spencer has arrived at comfortable middle age. This morning, he will pick up his phone and dial the private number of a highly placed friend. Chief Inspector Faraday's office, Sergeant Melrose speaking. Sergeant, this is Spencer Chadwick. Oh, good morning, Mr. Chadwick. Connect you right away. Spence, I hope you're not calling to cancel our golf date. No, no, Martin. I'm... I'm calling to tell you... I murdered my wife. I won't believe it, Spence. I can't believe it. Marty, look at her. She's dead. I see she's dead, but I won't believe you killed her. She's been stabbed, Inspector. Yes, Sergeant, yes. And that's the knife, Marty. Now, Spencer... You'll surely find my fingerprints on it. What's that bruise on your head? We had a fight. She hit me with the candlestick. Inspector, a glass door here leads to a terrace. It's been broken. Spence, an intruder, a thief. Did he slug you and kill Margaret? No. No, I killed Margaret. But that broken door... She tried to get away. I dragged her back into the room. Whose place is this? Mine. I didn't know you had an apartment downtown. I've been staying with a girl. Spence, you're talking to me, your closest friend, Marty Faraday. Excuse me, Inspector. Shall I start the routine? Yes, of course, Sergeant. Are you going to arrest me, Marty? I have to. I'm ready to go now. But I'm not ready to go. Look, I can't believe what you're telling me. I can't even believe you were cheating on Margaret. How can I believe you killed her? You've been a policeman for 25 years, Marty. Do you still have illusions, faith, ideals? If I do, it was because of people like you and Margaret. I'm sorry, Marty. Look, Spence... Is, is this the way it happened? You were having an affair. Margaret found out about it. She came here, confronted you. One thing led to another, and you killed her. Now, is, is that the, the, the story? Yes, yes, yeah, that's it. Well, where's the girl? I suppose she's dead, too. You suppose? Yes, yes, we can say she's dead. Well, how did she die? I killed her. What? When? Oh, a long, long time ago. A long time... Spence, you're not making any sense. How could you have killed her a long time ago if Margaret confronted the two of you here today? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Now, just arrest me and don't ask me any more questions. I have to ask, Spence. I can't accept what you're telling me. Now, think. How could you have killed her a long time ago? Oh, or did she kill me? Spence, please, tell me what happened. It doesn't matter. I want to help you, Spence. I'm your friend. You you, you, you won't believe me. Try me. Just try me. It's even hard for me to believe it. But it's true. Spence, sit down, will you? Will you just sit down and try to pull things together? Tell me what happened. What happened? 
It started one morning. It was three months ago. I came downstairs. Margaret was at the breakfast table. Morning, darling. Coffee? Ah, uh, thanks. Yes. Uh, any any mail, Margaret? Nothing worth delaying breakfast. Card from my brother. Uh, where is he now? He had to put in for repairs at Pago Pago. That's Pango Pango. Uh, when is he coming home? Oh, next year, maybe. Or the year after, when he gets bored or tired or needs money or decides to get a new girlfriend or another boat. And he's 38 years old. And he'll never get anywhere. Don't say that. It seems to me he goes everywhere. Oh, his life and yours, darling? A study in opposites. You were born poor and you wound up rich. He was born rich, wound up poor. Um, dinner tonight with the Satterfields. What for? What for? Oh, my God. <laughs> I practiced for almost five minutes before you came down, tossing off what I just said in an offhand, casual way. Dinner with the Satterfields. This is the coup of the century. A dinner party at the home of Senator Satterfield. Ask me how I did it. Why? Why do we want to have dinner with Senator Satterfield? Spence, you asked me to arrange for the invitation. I disagree completely with the man's principle. Oh, we understand all that. But you're the one who decided to give politics a whirl. When did I decide to do that? Well, <laughs> they say the sign of a really solid marriage is if the wife can accept jokes at breakfast. <laughs> Shall I remind you of that Chinese or Indian saying that you've been spouting lately? Hmm? A man spends his first 20 years living for himself, his next 20 living for his family, and his next 20 living for his country. It was you who decided. Dinner's at 7.30, black tie. So be home early, hmm? Ben? You're not listening. Darling. <laughs> Why are you looking at me like that? Is, is there something wrong? Who... Who are you? What did you say? I... I said, who are you? Oh, Tell Spencer. me. Spencer. What, what are you doing here? Now, look, darling. If this is a... Oh, no. Or oh, 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 what am I doing if here? If this is a joke, it's not in the best of taste. I'm afraid... I'm afraid I don't know where I am. Or, uh, or who you are. Do you know who you are? Yes, I, I, yes, I think I know who I am. I'm, I'm Spencer Chadwick. All right, now listen. Sit quietly for just a minute. I'm going to call Dr. Berger. Oh, uh, please, uh, please. I don't want to put no, you to any trouble. Don't get up, Spencer. Please, don't get... Where are you going? Where... Home. This is your home, Spencer. Uh, please, uh, don't be alarmed. Please, I, I hope I haven't frightened you. I'll, I'll leave this minute. <laughs> After 23 years of marriage, you look at your wife one morning and you don't know who she is? Yes, Martin. All right. You walked out of the house. Now, where did you go? I hailed a cab. Now, where to, pal? I don't know. Ah, it's all right. None of us know where we're going. Just answer this, sir. Where do you want me to take you? Just drive. Okay, you're the doctor. What do you think, the Redskins got any kind of chance this year? All right, let's try politics. You think Satterfield's going to run again? Well, as my old man would have put it, you wasn't exactly vaccinated with a photograph needed. Driver, why are you headed north? Well, you said to drive. The Chadwood building is down on Jefferson Square. I distinctly told you, you to take... You distinctly told me nothing. What would I be doing in your cab at 9 o'clock in the morning if I didn't intend to go to my office? Yes, sir. <laughs> Good morning, Ruth. Oh, good morning, Mr. Chadwick. Uh, there's a uh, Dr. Berger sitting in your office. Dr. Berger? Yes, Dr. Berger. Come in here, Spence. I don't have all day. Well, come in and shut the door. May I remind you that this is my office? Fifteen minutes ago, I received a call from Margaret. Margaret? Is she all right? About you. Me? I thought it important enough for me to stop off here on my way downtown. Hold out your wrist. Wait, uh, why did Margaret call you? She told me about that little episode. What? What little episode? You don't remember saying certain things? Paul, please, what is this all about? Paul seems to be a little fast. What am I supposed to have said to Margaret? I, uh, want you to report to the hospital right now. You 
can't just walk into my office and tell me to report to the hospital. Who says I can't? But what's the matter with me? I don't know. That's why I'm putting you into the hospital. What did Margaret tell you? That you didn't know who she was. Well, <laughs> how could I not know who she was? Have you had moments when you didn't know people, or you didn't know where you were, or what you were doing there? Well, certainly not. Now, level with me, Spencer. Listen, those things, they happen sometimes to everybody. How often do they happen to you? Well, the I... incident with Margaret, was it the only one? Well, Spencer, I'll see you at the hospital in 30 minutes. Well, you did it. You're here, Spence. Of course I'm here. I won't keep you an hour longer than necessary. Probably get you out by the end of the day. Paul, you do what's necessary. That's a good attitude. Most of you high-powered business types are so self-important. Don't, don't start to lecture me. I'm here. I agree I need some help. Now, now what's holding us up? I am. I'm talking to you, and I should be arranging for tests. Now, you just relax. Listen to some music, read, take a nap. <laughs> I'll see you. Hello? Spencer? Pe Peggy? Is everything all right, Spence? Peggy. Peggy, where are you? I'm at the apartment. Where else would I be? Tell me, are you all right? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, I'm certainly all right now. Oh, Peggy. Peggy. I almost lost you. How could you lose me? It could happen. How? Dr. Berger. Dr. Berger. He could, he could make it happen. But not now. Not, not anymore. Do you know why? Why, Spence? You called me just in time. You warned me just in time. And I'm getting out of here this minute. Mr. Chadwick. Yes, Ruth? Uh, aren't you supposed to be at the hospital? I'm not supposed to be anywhere except in my office during the business day. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, uh, this Dr. Berger, he's been calling just about every five minutes. And your wife. Uh, Shall I get them for you? No, no. I left Dr. Berger a note saying I changed my mind about the necessity for what we were discussing. Now, tell him I have nothing to add. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, uh, call my wife and remind her we have a dinner date with Senator Satterfield. And no calls. No calls. I don't want to talk to anyone. Uh, uh, yes, sir. Except, except uh, a young lady. She'll call herself Peggy. Well, for 23 years, you hum the same tune. And then, suddenly, one morning, you hear the music of a different drummer. A drummer named Peggy. Or is she a piper named Peggy? Who will have to be paid? We shall return shortly with Act Two. And so we have Spencer Chadwick in complete command. Ready to take hold of his life and run it his own way. Starting with his wife. Spencer? Is that you? There's no problem, no problem. It's not even a quarter of seven. I can be dressed and ready to leave in 20 minutes. Spencer, there is a problem. You made Dr. Berger look like a fool today. You read my note. It explained everything. You made yourself look like a fool. You admitted to the hospital, and less than an hour later, you sneaked out. I did not sneak out. I got dressed, went to the desk, and said, I'm leaving. Send me the bill. But, Spence, you're not well. I've never felt better. You should be in the hospital. Margaret, please stop running my life. What did you say just now, Spence? I'm sure you heard me. I wasn't aware that I was running your life. Spencer, would you be good enough to explain? Can you show me how? Uh, you did say this thing was black tie? Spencer, I, I'm entitled to an explanation of that remark. Margaret, if you can't understand what I'm saying, how can I explain it? Quite a man, this husband of yours, Miss Chadwick. Uh, some brandy? Yes, thank you, Senator. Uh, we need men like you in public life, Spence. Fellas with their heads screwed on straight. You know, I have an opportunity to recommend a man for a presidential advisory commission on... I, I don't think I'd be interested, Senator. I like your style, Chadwick. 
You play hard to get, but you do it convincingly. The public eats that up. No. No, Senator, it's not a pose. You see, sir, it seems to me that I've spent all my life working for other people. Serving others is the most richly rewarding profession a man can follow. Uh, that's if he happens to be a selfless person. But I never saw myself as a manufacturer of farm equipment. I wanted to study languages, the basic structures of human communication. An admirable calling. Margaret and I were going to leave for Tibet on our honeymoon, but my father-in-law became seriously ill. Somebody had to look after his affairs till he could get on his feet again. That was 23 years ago. He never did get back on his feet, and I never did get out of his office. But you transformed that little factory into the third largest enterprise... I know, Senator, I know, I know. I did it for my wife, my in-laws, my employees, the stockholders. But now, finally, at length and at last, I'm going into business for myself. What sort of business? The Spencer Chadwick business. The let's please and amuse and excite and develop and enhance Spencer Chadwick. Thank you for your offer, Senator. But there are many others who are more worthy, not to mention more willing. Spencer, when did you decide you were no longer interested in public service? Oh, it's been building for a while. We'll have to talk. Oh, about what? About what? I don't know if this is a pose or... Margaret, I'm sure I can explain. Now, let's drop in somewhere for a nightcap. No, let's get home. Now, do you remember what you said to me this morning? No. You insist you don't recall our little scene at breakfast? No, I'm, I'm very sorry. You looked at me this morning and you said, Who are you? You said it with sincerity and conviction. You meant it. Look, I, I don't... I may have been... You may have been what? I, daydreaming. No, it was not daydreaming. It was wishful thinking. Oh, Margaret, what are you saying? Spencer, you're having an affair. Uh, what? Please don't deny it. But I'm, I'm, I'm not. It fits in with what Dr. Berger told me. Ab about what? When you say to me, who are you? It means you no longer want to know me. You're trying to wish me out of your life. Oh, Margaret, Margaret, I can tell you... Now listen, Spencer, don't try to insult my intelligence or yours. And then, what just happened at Senator Satterfield's? What just happened? Well, suddenly you're no longer interested in public service. Why? If you heard me talking to him, you'd know that finally I want to do things for me. But he as much as offered you a post that you dreamed about. A sensitive post. And you could become an important man nationally. You've spoken about it a dozen Margaret, times. Margaret, Margaret, I no longer care about it. Well, of course not. Because you become controversial. Make enemies. And then they try to get something on you. And now that you're having an affair, you're vulnerable to scandal. But I am not having... Oh, don't lie to me. That just makes it worse. <laughs> but you were lying to her, Spence. We know you are lying. We know about... Peggy. Inspector. Yes, Sergeant. If you'll come into the bedroom, Inspector, I didn't want to move anything. All right. Now, sir, here are these pictures. Are these Peggy? Are they, Spence? Yes. Well, sir, if you look at the hairstyle, that went out 25 years ago. Hmm. I'm no expert, but these don't look like pictures that were taken recently. Now, the clothes in the closet, skirts, blouses, dresses, are these Peggy's? Are they, Spence? Yes. The styles are about 25 years old. Now, here's a label in a skirt. It's a Lydia Carter. She was a designer who was fashionable 30 years ago. Well, Spence, tell us. I can't. Why can't you? I don't think I know how. Never mind how it sounds. Just tell it. Martin, did you ever think you could somehow get a second chance? To do what? To live your life over. To answer your question, no. Did you ever think you could go back to a point in time when you made a decision which changed everything for you? Where you crossed your own particular Rubicon and and if you could go back, start again, and do the thing you really wanted to do? To answer your question again, no. That's because you never regretted the course of your life. And you did? Are you trying to tell me that you did? Every day for 23 years. 
All right, Spence. Uh, I won't press you. No, no, Mar- no, Marty, don't put that sympathetic tone in your voice as if, as if you think I'm some kind of nut. Look, you could plead insanity. Once again, Marty, Marty, I'm not crazy. Temporary insanity. Not for one minute. I asked you a question. Can you go back? Can you live your life over again? And I gave you my answer. No. But you can. You can do it. I did go back. Not for long. But I did go back. All right. All right, Spence. You did go back. And if I hadn't lost my head, if only I hadn't killed Margaret, I could have stayed. I could have started over. Peggy, hmm? want to go to a movie? No. I missed the news broadcast. Anything happening? They think a war just started. Oh, come on, Peggy. Come on. There aren't going to be any more wars. Everybody knows that. People may be crazy, but they're not insane. <laughs> Where? I think the man said Korea. Someplace like that. But maybe I didn't hear it right. Hey, if you don't want to go to the movies, what do you want to do? Sit home and just listen to you. Tell me about the trip you're planning. Well, first, uh, don't call it a trip. We may never come back. It may (laughs) take all our lives. Fine with me. And we may never find it. Great. What are we looking for? The origin of language. For instance, we say brother in English. German, Dutch, Scandinavian, so on, say a form of bruder. Same basic word. Latin, Greek, frater. The BR becomes FR. Russian, obra. The differences are all in pronunciation. Okay. How did this one language spread so far and wide to cover so many different kinds of people? A bite. How? That's what I want to find out. And we will travel and study and research and one day, maybe... Maybe what? This Indo-European language, it's only one of 30 language families. At one time, was there one single language, the mother of all? Was there? I don't know. One day, I hope to find out. Yeah, yeah, are you sure you wouldn't mind scrounging around Europe and Asia? Oh, I've been to Europe and Asia. Ah, but not with a backpack. <laughs> not with a sleeping bag. <laughs> I'm going to love it. Uh, now, one thing must be clearly understood. At no time, regardless of the bind we may find ourselves in, shall we ever, ever, under any circumstances, wire your father for money. <laughs> promise? I promise. <laughs> Hello, Margaret. Where have you been, Spencer? Oh, excuse me. I hope that doesn't sound shrewish. Well, no, no, it doesn't. Or as if I'm trying to run your life. Please, Margaret, cut it out. The reason I ask is because I had prepared dinner. I know. Didn't you get my message? Yes, I did. I got it at eight. Meanwhile, at seven, the Millers, the Brownsteins, and the Gladwells arrived. No, no, the Gladwells were here at 6.30. But what? Why? You had asked me to invite them to dinner. And these are your friends, Spencer. I'm sorry, Margaret. I'm, I'm sorry. Yes. Well, if they were people I like, I would have been humiliated. This way, I was merely embarrassed. Well, I got through the evening, somehow. Spencer, tell me. Who is she? Margaret, Margaret, believe me, there is no... I start with the premise that it's my fault. Somewhere I must have failed you. I've gone wrong. But I don't know where, and I don't know how. Tell me, Spence, tell me. Margaret, please, Margaret. Please, Margaret, what? Oh, Spencer, I've been happy. You've been happy. Our marriage, it's been the envy of so many of our friends. Oh, darling, has it been a lie? Have we been living a lie all these years? Do you want the answer? I demand an answer. The answer is yes, yes, it's been a lie. Who is she, Spence? Who is she? Who is she, Spencer? Who is Peggy? I won't tell you, Martin. I should say, who was Peggy? Inspector, do you remember some time ago you saw Mrs. Chadwick? It was on business, I remember. Oh, yes. Yes, yes, I do. It had to do with a burglary, Spence. A burglary in your house. Believe me, Margaret, this is no bother at all. You see, I felt if I called the local precinct, I'd have police traipsing all about the place. It just isn't worth it. Well, what happened? Well, it's silly, but... Well, you know us. We never throw anything out. 
It's a sound idea. The worthless junk of yesterday has suddenly become expensive antiques. It's mm. incredible. Yes, Myra. All right, I'll be brief. <laughs> we have a storage space where we keep old things, clothes, knickknacks, you know, stuff that you say you'll throw out sometime. You never get around to it. You never do. And? Well, it's all been stolen. Stolen? It's missing. Well, it must have been stolen. I don't care about it, but it's just unnerving to consider that the house has been broken into. Mm. Well, send a list of the stuff to Sergeant Milrose. Huh? It's not important. But but I feel that since a crime has been committed, it, it should be reported. Did I do the right thing? Of course. Of course you did, Margaret. That list. I gave you that list, Sergeant. It's on my desk, sir. I'm sure most of the items in this closet were on it. Spencer, you were the burglar. Technically? Yes. She needed clothes, Marty. That girl, she's a fantasy. No, no, not Peggy. All right, look, for reasons that I may never understand, you feel you wasted your life. So you fantasized a way to go back, to start over. It was no fantasy. Sergeant Milrose. Hell, it wasn't. You were sorry you married Margaret, mm -hmm. which all by itself proves that you're insane, Spence. You created this Peggy, and you had to dress her in a period of 25 years ago. There is no Peggy. This whole thing happened in your mind. Yes, thank you, Lieutenant. Yes, Sergeant? Uh, sir, uh, that was from the lab. They scraped some grass samples from a skirt in the closet, and it's been identified as Duke of Wentworth Fescue. All right. Uh, it's a new kind of seed, just been planted for the first time. When? Well, about a month ago, which means somebody wearing this skirt was sitting in the grass in Benton Park very recently. You figure if a man's been married for 23 years, he may have a tendency to fantasize a bit. But Spencer Chadwick has created more than an illusion. He has brought forth flesh and blood. Particularly, blood. We'll be back shortly with Act Three. It was all right while Peggy was only an illusion. She was Spencer Chadwick's private affair. But a living Peggy or even a dead Peggy, is a serious matter for Police Chief Inspector Faraday. Spence, make it easy for all of us. Tell me, who is Peggy? Or who was Peggy? We can find out, Spence. We can check with the neighbors, the janitor, circulate your picture in the neighborhood, ask people if they've seen you around with a girl. You'll never find her. Don't say that. It's virtually impossible for a person to disappear without a trace. I still say you'll never find Find her. Damn it, Spence, I can't get used to it. You and Margaret, and then you and this Peggy. How could you live with both of them? Didn't things get rough at home? Yes. Well, what brought on the showdown? Well, after a while, we couldn't go anywhere without Margaret seeing her. Yeah. Come on, Rockabye! Spencer. What? Is that the girl? What? Who? That girl, she's been looking at you all afternoon. Oh, Margaret, Margaret, believe me. Why don't you invite her down here? She'll have a better view from our box. Oh, Margaret. No reason we shouldn't all behave in a civilized manner. Introduce her. Margaret, I never saw that girl before in my life. Margaret, you're staring. No, not me. That girl's been staring at you all evening. Margaret, Margaret, believe me. Wherever we'd go, there'd be no peace. She always suspected somebody. Last week, it even happened when we were playing golf with you and Henrietta. You're up, Margaret. I'd use a three-wood on this hole, Margaret. All right. Oh, too bad. Well, you go up there and show me how, Marty. You rushed the shot, you lifted your head. I really don't care about golf. You made the date with Marty and Henrietta. Well, we simply can't drop out of circulation. Spencer... That girl in the foursome behind us. Margaret, Margaret, she's not the one. Spencer, where were you? I had a meeting. Oh, well, we progressed. <laughs> Used to be you didn't know, you couldn't remember. And now at least you're courteous enough to lie to me. You've been drinking, Margaret? Yes, yes, that's true. I have been drinking. Margaret, it's not good for you. Oh, I don't know. Let's consider that. Drinking is not good for me. I, I won't fight that. However, what you are doing, that's good for me, hmm? Although I must say you're treating me nicer these days. You started off by asking, who are you? As if you didn't know me, and now at least you don't ask. The phone rang today, and I answered it, and the line was dead. What's going to happen, Spence? I intend 
to go away with her. Well, finally, you've admitted it. You are having an affair. Yes. Who's the woman? Who? Yes, who? I'm not sure you'd want to know. I have a right to know. Well, then, perhaps you do. Who is she, Spencer? She's you. Me? Yes, Margaret. The girl is you. <laughs> what kind of... No, nonsense? no, 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 no. That's not quite right. She, she isn't you. Then what were you trying to say? She was you. She isn't Margaret Chadwick. She was Peggy Wainwright. Spencer, don't look at me like that. I'm scared. Do you want me to prove it to you? Come with me. Come with me right now. This is what Dr. Burbick was concerned about. Spence, it's no disgrace to have a breakdown. It's no shame to need psychiatric no, help. No, no. We're past all that, Margaret. Come with me. I want you to meet Peggy. Come with me. No, Spencer. You come with me. You come with me to Dr. Berger. You know, you know Margaret, people like you have one answer. Whenever you're up against something you don't understand, you have one answer. Whenever you're faced with something that's beyond your experience, you have one answer. See a doctor. That solves everything. That takes care of everybody. And it never occurs to you that yours might just possibly be the wrong answer. Now, why are you so sure of yourself, Margaret? Why are you so sure that I'm the one who's wrong? Come with me, Margaret. I want you to meet Peggy. Or are you afraid? Does it look familiar, Margaret? Spence. This is 32 Benton Boulevard. It's our first address. I remember. Do you remember the apartment number? Three. Three A. Oh, don't tell me it's still there. See for yourself. <laughs> And this bronze candlestick, our very first wedding present from my brother. These clothes. My clothes. How did they get there? They're here because they're Peggy's clothes. Oh, look, Spence, the Lydia Carter skirt. Oh, you love me in that. Do you know that style's come back? I want to put it on. Do you remember what we used to do? We'd go for a walk. In the park. Dinner at Luigi's. We never had dinner at Luigi's. Oh, that's right. We couldn't afford it. And by the time we could, we weren't living here anymore. And we stopped at the burger shop. What's tonight? Thursday. That means there's a free concert in the park. And then free dancing. Oh, let's go, Spence. Let's do it all again. <laughs> How much fun we had in those days. They were... They were great days, Peggy. Peggy? <laughs> I always liked Peggy better. Somewhere along the line, you stopped calling me Peggy. When exactly did you stop calling me Peggy? When you became Margaret. I always wondered about that. How did I become Margaret? Why? Take a look around. See, Peggy? All the bags, the trunk, we're packed for the trip. The trip? The trip to Tibet. Oh, oh, yes. We were all set to go. Yes. You remember? Yes. As a matter of fact, you were a little bit sick from the shots, remember? Remember? Yes. And then the telephone rang. Phone? Yes, yes. The phone rang. It was... It was... It, it, it was my mother. Yes, yes. It was your mother. I remember. Answer the phone. Go ahead. Go ahead. Answer it. You answered it that night. Hello? Yes. Y yes, mother? Oh, no. Yes. Oh, all right. All right. We'll go there. Right away. What is it, Peggy? My dad... He's had a stroke. How bad? Well, we don't know yet. Oh. Oh, Spence, I don't think we can... I mean, I... 
I can't leave Mother alone right now. No, we won't. Oh, Spence. I knew you'd understand. That's when you became Margaret. That's when you were no longer my wife, but your father's daughter. Take off the skirt. Leave it here. Go home. It belongs to Peggy. Spence, what's the matter with you? I'm Peggy. That night was the start of it. The start of what? The start of a campaign to mold me into the kind of man you had in mind. The man who would enjoy the kind of existence you always had and always wanted. Safe, comfortable, secure. All you were asked to do was to help my father, who was deathly ill. Who else could have done it? My brother? It was supposed to just be a temporary arrangement. But it suited you, Spence. It suited you, I started making the kind of money your folks never dreamed of. I built an empire. I never wanted it. You, you wanted it. You wanted it so badly you stopped being Peggy. You went somewhere else. You you became lost. But not me. I'm, I'm, I'm not lost. I found my way back. And when I got there, I found Peggy again. Now, take off that scratch and give it back to Peggy. Spencer, I listen to you. Now you listen to me. I've been listening to you for 23 years. And now we've come to the end. The bags are packed, and it's not too late. We're leaving for Tibet. Peggy and me. Peggy? Peggy? Yes, Spencer, darling. Spence, get this straight. I'm Peggy. Don't listen to her, Spence. She was always out to destroy you. She almost did till you came back to me. I'm Peggy. The only Peggy you have. She's lying. She's trying to stop you. We are going to Tibet. That chance. You'll take that appointment from Satterfield. That refusal was just a ploy. You know it. He knows it. Shut up, Margaret. Shut her up, Spencer. Shut her up. I didn't destroy you. You destroyed me. You have to kill her, Spence. Go ahead. Live with this fantasy of yours, this Peggy who rewrites history. She's all yours. I want my skirt. Take off that skirt. It's mine. It's all I want from you for 23 years of marriage. Don't let her out of here. She'll tell everybody about us. They'll put you away, Spence. Get away from that door. No. Spence, keep away from me. No. You, you won't get out that way. Spence, I warn you. I'll hit you with this. Uh, no, you asked for it. You asked for it. Use a knife, Ben. Use a knife. Peggy. Peggy. Where are you, Peggy? You. You killed us both, Ben. Oh. Oh. Margaret. Ah. Um. Margaret. Margaret. <laughs> Chief Inspector Faraday's office, Milro speaking. Sergeant, this is Spencer Chadwick. I. I just murdered my wife. Well, as they say, all of us are two people. One is the person we think we are, and the other is the person we really are. And the secret of a long, happy life is to make sure the twain never meet. I'll be back shortly. This is WOR New York, your station for Mystery Theater. Well, the jury's still out. Oh, not on Spencer Chadwick. With him, it was open and shut. But on the basic idea, can you go back? Can you do it again? Well, to end on a non-controversial note, Here is something everybody can do again. Tune in again for more suspense and excitement. Our cast included Richard Mulligan, Mandel Kramer, Marion Seldes, Bryna Rayburn, and Gil Mack. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown.
Now, a preview of our next tale. You know what I'm going to do, Laurie? I am going to turn this car right around and head back to the city. Oh, no, George. Please don't. What's that? We all fall. You hear something like, like, like singing? Ring a ring of roses. Let me open the window. It's a pocket full. It's a woman. Oh, singing that old nursery rhyme. Two. We all fall down. Well, what's that snapping ring sound? It sounds like a piece of leather. It sounds like a whip. George, what are you two. doing? I'm getting out. Two. No, don't leave me, George. I'm coming with you. Wait. Okay, but stay close to me. Radio Mystery Theater was sponsored in part by the Kellogg Company, makers of Kellogg's Special K cereal. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. The preceding Mystery Theater program was furnished by the CBS Radio Network.